Sophia DiMartino, I know you suggested that Sylvie would probably grab a burger after killing He Who Remains. So how does it feel to be the person responsible for bringing McDonald's into Loki? Yeah, I don't know how to feel about that still. Um, <laughs> I definitely learned my lesson. Be careful what you say to producers. <laughs> <laughs> Even if you're half joking, they might end up writing it into a second series. Um, no, I think I think it was fun. And I think it's really interesting to see her in that world, right? Like McDonald's just, it's it represents so much. And in a way, it's her just testing out what normal human life might be. Um, and she's like a fish out of water for that first episode, like trying to navigate calm normal life where she's not on the run she's not trying to kill someone she's trying to assimilate um but she's you know she's an outsider and she's definitely not normal so that was that was fun yeah i mean I, i'll just say i was so excited to see mcdonald's in <laughs> the season and i immediately went to get the loki branded sweet oh, and sour yeah. sauce and i still have one packet left Do you? <laughs> yes yeah, I saw they did all that. Crazy. <laughs> well, I just, I, I, I feel like that, I mean, it's like, you know, McDonald's is like fun and silly, but you know, what you were saying with like, what's next for her is it rings so true. Cause like for so long, she's been on this revenge mission and she got what she wanted. She killed him. So it's like, what's next for her? And she needs, she might be hungry too, but like, I think she also needs that like comfort and Yeah. Mm -hmm. It's comfort and it's also just a way to make connections. You walk into McDonald's and you see like a little cross section of society and life and real people. And it's just her, you know, gateway to to the world and to try and, you know, her the beginning of her trying to make a home and to make some connections with other people. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, and and you, you also know that she is like she's not going to be there forever like this is just like a temporary stop and who knows what's next and then obviously Loki comes and disrupts everything so, <laughs> so what what do you think she was feeling when he comes the first time obviously she doesn't want to be pulled back in but I think there's a part of her where she is such a fighter that she can't say no and that's why we we see her join back in the fight essentially yeah, hundred percent. It's inevitable that Sylvie is always going to be back in the ring. She's a natural born fighter. She's never going to, you know, she's like a dog with a bone, like a cat with a bone. She's never going to leave it if she thinks something's unjust or not right. So when she first sees Loki, I think it's that thing of when you bump into an ex and there's just so much history, you're, you're sort of relieved to see them because you've been dreading it for so long. You're relieved that they're okay but you're also dreading having to have a conversation with them and also wanting to know why the hell have they come to find me? What, you know, something must have gone wrong somewhere. They want something from me. So there's just so much stuff that is unsaid when they first see each other. And that's why that first scene in McDonald's when they see each other for the first time is so electric because of all this stuff flying around that's unsaid mm -hmm, for sure um I mean like you you guys do have that conversation later on in the series towards the end and I love when Sylvie says to him like of course I'm selfish like I want a life I want to live like what do you want and she gets him to admit that he wants to fix everything because he just wants his friends back um and it's like you know everyone is selfish on some level so when, when do you think it's good to be selfish and to be selfless because this is always something that Loki has had to reckon with yeah it's a tricky one I don't know I, like personally I think it's important to make sure you're okay before you can help someone else um it's like that thing of like putting on your own oxygen mask before you help uh, someone else put theirs on <laughs> like you can't do anything if you're not all right um, so making sure you're fit and healthy and happy before you can then help everyone else. Um, there's some truth to that. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And then she, he, like, she, she gets him to, to see that because then he gives up everything to, so yeah. you guys can have a chance. So um, yeah. I also love when she goads him <laughs> into saying that he would have to kill her and she says, like, I'm not going to give you my blessing to kill me. 
and it, it's like she knows he's not going to do it like he would never kill her yeah. right and mm-hmm. she's never even gonna <laughs> say that he can yeah she's too they're both so stubborn mm-hmm. yeah she knows she knows him so well that she can sort of dangle a carrot right in front of it she, she, you know she can tease him to the point of to to the very point of like almost killing her or like offering herself up but she's never going to actually say it because she yeah. knows that it's never going to happen i know that that's why i love it because i was like she knows he's not going to do it so at in that moment like what do you think sylvie thinks he was going to do exactly well i think that's yeah. the question she's like what are you what are you going to do about it because you're not going to mm-hmm. kill me so he it's it's a chess game isn't it it's stalemate yeah and he, he needs plan c <laughs> <laughs> But I, I love that, too, because it's like we've seen over the two seasons, like, you know, like she's a variant of him. And so it's, how how do you think they've changed each other? I think because I think um, Sylvie is like slightly less angry than when we first met her. Yeah, she's definitely softened up in the second series, especially at the beginning of the second series. Um, I think they've changed each other hugely. Um, they both started off as very lonely individual wild animals and meeting each other has meant that they have fundamentally realized that they are not alone and they are not um the only one i guess um so maybe it's developed their compassion somehow just imagining how someone else is feeling um I don't know, I, I think that they can actually feel each other's feelings being variants of each other. So, I mean, how would that change you? It's just profound compassion, knowing how someone else is feeling all the time. Um, and that's gonna broaden everything. Mm-hmm. So what what do you think Sylvie thinks of Loki's sacrifice at the end so they can all have free will? Like you see, like she's very touched by it. And then we have that moment with her Mobius at the end too. I think she's she's relieved that she's got what she wanted free will she she's lost Loki um Mm -hmm. as as part of that um and that's been the ultimate sacrifice I guess I think I think she's she doesn't think it's the end at the end of series two she knows that that's not forever Mm -hmm. I think she's almost like keeping an eye on the situation or something like, okay, this is great for now. Thank you. Yeah, well it's just done. the McDonald's for now. It's good. Yeah. <laughs> she, knows him. she knows that he's going to get fed up with that eventually. <laughs> but, but do you think so? Do you think like she, she thinks he'll eventually just leave the tree? <laughs> I don't know about leave it, but start to meddle in some way or... Find another way to hold the branches together so he can leave. Maybe or intercept what's happening in some way, like that he shouldn't be, or I don't know, the chaos will reign. Yeah. And 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 what she says too is also so loaded because she's like, it's it feels weird without Loki here. So it kind of feels like, will she try to visit him somehow? I don't even know if that's possible. <laughs> I don't know. I don't know. I don't know the logistics of it either. <laughs> <laughs> I mean I I sometimes I can barely follow what you guys are saying with like the loom and I'm like, oh right, yeah. <laughs> The, the three put multiplier yeah um i i love the the moment in i think the fifth episode right when sylvie is in the record store listening to the velvet underground and then everything starts spaghettifying around her it's such a great scene and also a very emotional scene and that also feels like another mcdonald's for her another comfort zone yeah uh, so what what do you think she was feeling in that moment i think she's had a crap day and he gives her that song to listen to. And she's just, she, I think she knows in that moment that she's going to lose everything. Everything's under threat. She's, she's devastated that she's going to have this life taken away from her. And maybe that's the last moment she gets of being in that moment. So she's reveling in it, but also very sad that it's going to leave. Um, and it does like moments later. Um, 
it's just real like deep sadness that she's she she realizes in that moment that she's never going to be allowed to be content and happy in that way mm -hmm. and then she has to go back to see him and to deal with this like she does have to deal with this yeah uh, I also love the the scene when you guys are back in the you have to reenact this season one finale basically <laughs> and you're um with he remains and you you have to act like you were back then while Loki is Loki presently and trying to stop you from killing him. So what was it like shooting that scene over and over again? <laughs> it was cool. You don't often get to go back as yeah. Well to reshoot something so it's nice to revisit it um it was it was fun like having the wig put on to like they had to make a wig that looked like my hair two years prior um it was fun to be back in sylvie's costume from series one that was really helpful to get in the headspace and then like reimagine like the moment before she kills he who remains getting back into that headspace going back into like angry sylvie um mode and, but the way we shot it was very different. It wasn't like a continuous scene. The, in series one, we shot that, like we learned all the choreography and it was really fluid how we just shot it as it as it was. We did all the dialogue. It was like a dance. We did it from start to finish. And this, because of the special effects and the Loki rewinding time, and then I would freeze and then like the different angles, it was a really strange way of shooting it. So I just had to stand really still and then like run off set while Tom carried on speaking. And then I'd have to run back on again and then do like a move. And then, so it's really stop start. So it's quite tricky to remain that angry for a whole day when you're like stopping and starting and running in and out. Um, yeah, com it was completely different to the first time round. So it was cool. Yeah, because you're charging at someone trying to kill them and then you all of a sudden you have to freeze. <laughs> yeah, exactly. over and over again in exactly the same way and mm -hmm. trying to ignore what he's doing, which is different to the first series. Mm -hmm. uh, well, obviously we don't know about a third season, although this would be a, a great series finale ending to the show as well. But wh where do you think Sylvie is going when she walks away from Mobius. I don't think it's back to McDonald's. Like what, what's her next adventure? <sighs> Who knows? I think she's definitely not going back to McDonald's. I mean, it's not even there anymore. I think it became spaghetti, but she, I think she's, like I said before, she's, she's almost happiest when she's fighting for something. So maybe continuing to try and find out what her, glorious purpose might be looking for the next fight yeah fighting the good fight yeah for sure uh well it was great speaking with you thank you so much for your time and fingers crossed maybe for more adventures thanks Joyce <laughs> thank you mm -hmm.